Hi guys, welcome back to my channel or if you're new, welcome. My name is Monica and today I'm doing my finale video for my hashtag drop 10 by summer project pan. If you haven't seen the rest of the videos in this series, I've done this is the fourth one. So there's four videos total at this point. I will throw the playlist right up there so you can check it out. This was my very first actual project pan project and I learned a lot. I know I said in my intro video I would do this until the end of August, but I feel like at this point the project is kind of ground to a halt and I've done everything that I can with it and I really want to move on to a new project. I, I don't know if you can tell from the makeup, I'm really feeling fall. So I do want to start a new fall project pan, so I'm going to finish this one up, take everything that I've learned, and put it into my next project. So before we jump into the video, don't forget to give this a thumbs up if you like these project pan videos and if you're excited for my new project and for this finale. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, hit the little bell icon to be notified whenever I post a new video. So let's jump into the products. Okay, so I'm just gonna go in the order in which I talked about them in my intro video just because I have that list right here, a little bit easier to go through. So the first product was the Avon Haiku Fragrance. This I did finish up. I think it was in my second update. I totally finished it up. So that one is good and then that one is finished. Next I have the Frisali Rose Gold Elixir. I hardly use this thing. I tried using it as a primer a couple of times and it just did not work for me as a primer and I could not figure out any other way to use this other than as a primer. So I am going to declutter this because it's got it doesn't have a place in my collection and I shouldn't be holding on to things that just I can't get to work for me. The next product is one that I also finished up completely that is the Dr. Jar to Luminizer Pores No More Primer. So like I said in my intro video, I did get that in a BoxyCharm. I just canceled my BoxyCharm subscription. If you guys want to see a video all about that, check it out in the cards. I talk a lot more about my experience with BoxyCharm and with subscription boxes in general. But before I canceled my subscription, I had a whole bunch of like boxy points. I forgot what they're called. Um, I had enough to pick up a full size product from their store for free. And I had a free shipping coupon, so I didn't have to pay anything for this. And I picked up another one of the primer because it was, you know, totally free. I'm about to cancel my subscription. I was going to lose the points. So I grabbed another one of the primer. This is an amazing primer. I didn't like luminizing primers before I panned that one. And just the texture, just everything, fantastic, fantastic. And it's actually gotten me to try other luminizing primers that I've also grown to love. So... Just goes to show you if you you gotta give everything like a chance like because i was just stay away from luminizing primers because i'm like oh i'll look oily oh it won't look good on my skin and i love them that's one thing that i've learned the next product one that i struggled with throughout this project is the l'oreal infallible pro glow foundation in 204. One thing i learned is just for me personally this might work for other people i can't pan things i don't like or that I have to struggle to make work for me it's just not gonna work so this one it was too dark for me I didn't like the finish I didn't like the texture I tried mixing it with a whole bunch of foundations and I found one that I kind of liked it with and I ran out of that foundation when it comes to a foundation I need to pan a foundation that I love which is what I'm going to be doing in my next project because I have some foundations that I love that I don't wear because I'm afraid of using it up that is what I should be panning because I actually know that I love them enjoy them want to get my money out of them I shouldn't be panning something that I don't like just for the sake of panning so this is going to get decluttered forever <laughs> I also completely used up the next item. It was a sample. This was the Dior Skin Forever Undercover Foundation Sample. I really liked the foundation, but I did pick up a different Dior foundation during the course of this project, so I didn't buy that one. I enjoyed the sample. The shade worked out well for me. I do have a whole series now about working through my samples. It's called Bite Size Reviews. I'll throw that up in the cards if you guys want to check that out. I'm currently on volume three. The next product is another one that I totally used up. It's the first time I've gone through one of these and that is a MAC paint pot. I used up an entire MAC paint pot and this is in Painterly. There is my empty jar. I'm of course gonna clean it out, make it look all pretty before I back to MAC it, but I'm just ecstatic that I used the whole thing. I felt so excited. I think this was the most exciting thing to pan 
because I know it's a rather expensive item, but I had this for about a year. A year. And for the past few months, I've been using it daily. You get a good amount of product in here. You get a good amount of uses in here. It's one of the best eye primers on the market. I do have another paint pot in Soft Ochre, so odds are you're going to see that one in my next project pan. Another item that I don't have anymore because I did completely use it up was the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind Concealer in Light Pale. That is my favorite drugstore concealer for spot concealing. It is so good. I don't like it for under my eyes. It gets a little strange, gets a little creepy, but for spot concealing especially because I get really bad like acne right around my period every month on my chin and on like my upper lip and that just covers it up so well and it's really affordable. It's I need to do a whole video on drugstore concealers because I've struggled finding good drugstore concealers, but that one's an amazing drugstore concealer. The next product that I barely touched is the Wet n Wild Ultimate Brow Highlighter. I was using this as an inner lower waterline eyeliner. And what I learned from this is that I can't pan something if it's not already like a part of my routine. If I'm adding in a new step for the sake of panning something, odds are it's not gonna work for me. If I had been using this regularly before my project, I might have been able to pan it. But I kept forgetting to use it and the few times I did use it, it was like I had to go out of my way to do it. Overall, it's good for what it does either as an eyeliner or as a brow highlight. It's just not a normal part of my routine right now. So I'm not going to declutter it. It's a good product. It's affordable. It does what it's supposed to do. I'm just currently not reaching for it daily. The next product. Again, barely touched. This is the ColourPop Lippy Pencil and BFF. What I've learned from this is one, I barely touch lip liner at all. I've been reaching for liquid lipsticks, which I'm definitely now leaning more towards satin and a couple of bullet lipsticks, but overall I reach more for liquid lipsticks now. And so that was my mistake in trying to pan to products that I'm barely using right now. I should have tried to pan a liquid lipstick. That was my mistake. But the lip liner, I barely touched. I didn't use along with the next product and last product, which was the Tom Ford lipstick sample in Indian Rose. This is a beautiful shade. It's like my perfect nude color, but I'm not reaching for bullet lipsticks right now. I have a feeling this is going to be a perfect shade for fall. Fall and winter when it's dry, I feel like I would be more focused on moisturizing lip products. Whereas right now in the summer with it being so hot, I'm looking for something to just stay and not move. And I'll deal with a little bit of discomfort. So something I'm taking out of this project is pan what you're currently reaching for and not what you think you're gonna reach for. Cause odds are you're not going to reach for it if you're not already reaching for it. At least for me, that's what I've learned. So, in this project, I completely used up five out of my ten products. I'm gonna count this as a win for me. Not only was I able to use up more products than I thought I was actually going to be able to go through, and I learned so much about my makeup habits and about panning that I'm more well informed about myself and about the products that I like and that work for me. And that is what panning is all about. So yeah, I'm just really happy that I did this project and that I learned so much and I'm really excited to do more project pan projects in the future. One is coming up very soon, maybe even by the end of this week. So don't forget to subscribe so that you're notified when that video goes up. Let me know down below if you do pan or do project pans, what's the most surprising thing you've learned from your projects? I would love to start that conversation down in the comments and I hope I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.